Uh, my name is Glenn Yego from the Milken Institute, and we have the Milken Institute Israel Center, and we work a lot on financial and economic innovations there. What we found is it's the fastest time to discovery and the quickest time to market in terms of cost and cost of getting there in terms of innovations. So what was your interest in coming to the conference and um, what have you learned from being here? Was it more or less what you expected? And there's obviously lots of well, really interesting things. It's, it's rare that you find uh, uh, one country that is a, a large beta test site for all the world's problems and uh, the beginnings of its solutions. Yeah, no, that's a really great way of putting it, actually. And, you know, we thank you for joining us. You did an absolutely tremendous keynote at the beginning of the morning, and hopefully this will lead to an Israel conference year two. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Yossi. Hi, Renee. So you flew all the way from Israel for this conference. Nice and gave you. us a very delightful yeah, keynote speech, know, right? So tell us, do you yeah. want to summarize yeah. what that is? The yeah. secret yeah. sauce yeah. of what makes Israel yeah. innovation so, so special? The secret sauce is important, but I think it's more important how uh, uh, American and Israelis are uh, perceiving similar things in two different uh, ways. I don't know, you guys I think that we are arrogant, we think we are direct. If you guys think you are polite, we think you are hypocrite. And so it goes on and on and on. But nevertheless, I think there is very good relations between the two communities. So a lot of people in Silicon Valley know about Israel's technology innovation. What are some of the unknown innovations that are coming out of Israel that maybe Americans don't know about? First of all, they are now growing through genetic engineering. Uh, the emerging the technology of uh, corn and uh, typing machine. Remember the old yeah, typing machine? So when you end one row of uh, seeds, it rings. So you know that you have to go and. And the second great innovation which is coming out is a, is a trap for the cuckoo in a cuckoo clock, you know, a Swiss cuckoo clock, because sometimes it drives people crazy. So they install now, you can install the trap on the cuckoo and the first time the cuckoo is coming out and make the noise it's 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 hunter well it's, it's catcher okay and what about in entertainment and film <laughs> maybe something a little bit more known to people no this i really don't know you know it's like i uh, i love google Good. i think bob wants to ask a silly question <laughs> well I just want to know the, what the demarcation lines are between the issues of global and local warming. I mean, you don't know how global is global and how local is local. No, I, think, I think we exhausted this topic. You know, just decide, like, you can look it up on answers.com. There you go. <laughs> and what about green tech? Well, I want to know about what about questions.com. Why, why Bob doesn't do you with want, a side? Who wants questions when you can have uh, the, <laughs> the, the The people should come with answers and then the the other guys should in, uh, write a, the questions. They have a TV show like that. Uh, that yeah, Jeopardy. there is. Jeopardy. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> last thing, <laughs> one, one last thing, the Marker uh, conference that's coming up in New York. you yeah. want to tell us just a little bit about that? For yeah, the Marker, 24 and 25 of June, in the public library in New York, one of the most loved sites in New York. Jeff Pulver is doing on Wednesday the 24th of June, a BBBB breakfast, 4B breakfast, uh, which is bring, no, it's 5B breakfast, bring brown bag break, no, I'm sorry, bring brown bag breakfast, Bryant Park in New York, 42nd and 5th Avenue at 9 o'clock. Jeff Pulver will hold their breakfast. Got it. And we'll talk to Jeff Pulver next and get more details. Good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So, one question that I had for you from the from the panel this morning: the the company that you're 
that you're a part of now. Is that one of the companies that you that you that you've exited with, or was your experience with prior companies? When yeah, it's before an exit. Uh, it's a company that uh, we've already gotten a pre-acquisition offers, which uh, we decided to turn down at this stage. Uh, we're looking to make something really big uh, this time. Uh, we, is, uh, we are three founders, uh, technology, uh, product, and myself running the company. So for us, again, like I said this morning, looking on a very global perspective, trying to make a really significant uh, impact on this industry of research and marketing mm -hmm. is something that we see around the corner. Uh, we already sense that. So for us, this ride has been going well and hopefully we keep on going well. And you're based in Israel or, or are you? Actually, I'm in the transition. So uh, Coming this way or, or heading back? No, I'm going to the uh, Bay Area in uh -huh. a month. Uh, currently based in Israel, but uh, in the processes of uh, relocating uh, for a couple of years with their wife and family, mm -hmm. which uh, seems to be the right thing for the company, because the, the business lies here, while the talent and innovation lies in Israel, so I think it's a, uh, it's a killer combination. Yeah, it seems to be working for a lot of companies, so the R&D effort over there and the, the financing part of it over here, and also the market. Is, is most of the, the market going to be here in the States, do you expect? Or? Yeah, I think what we've experiencing is that uh, since last quarter, uh, U.S. has became number one. It became number one uh, for us. Uh, nevertheless, Europe and Asia uh, do uh, convert into significant dollars per country. So we do see this uh, global economy uh, perspective, but it seems that U.S. in that perspective is phenomenal. Uh, the way that uh, people are open for new technologies and the, uh, you know, the need for online marketing is something that is close to phenomenon here. So this is why I think this is the number one market. So if, if you could go back to the beginning and start over, is there anything that you would do differently, anything major that you would do differently or that you might advise someone who is, who is starting from scratch? A lesson learned, as well. I, I would say, I don't know if fortunately or unfortunately for Kenshu, uh, no. Um, Kenshu did not go via the regular vibe of, you know, you have this hype at the beginning and then there is this slowdown and then when you get out of it, uh, you're pretty strong or stronger. Uh, in Kenshu, from the beginning, it was like exponential growth uh, all over the world. Uh, we're trying to keep up with the speed and demand. Uh, so for now, it seems like we do manage to keep this balance between how solid, how fast, quality, everything in the intact. And the uh, Sapoya has been, you know, the investors, uh, they were so helpful. So I know if it's their experience and maturity, I don't know if it's the fact that they have so dominant impact here in the States, but everything they like is perfect. So I really don't have anything to say when I look back uh, that we should have been doing different. Um, that's great. That's, <laughs> that's a great story. Do you have?